guys, so today we are going to be talking all about my experience after using prescription tretinoin for a full year. So we're going to go over my whole experience, I'm going to show you my before and after transformation. I was prescribed tretinoin for acne a year ago, been on it ever since, and I definitely have a lot of thoughts. So I will go ahead and link below a video that I filmed last summer that really went into like my whole history with acne. So if you want to hear more backstory, definitely check that video out. But Long story short, I've been dealing with hormonal acne since I was a teenager. I was on hormonal birth control, which really helped to clear it up for a long time. But towards the end of 2020, I actually went off of the pill for completely unrelated reasons. I just didn't like how it was affecting my mood. And my acne did come back in full force a few months later. April 2021, I went to the dermatologist and I was actually prescribed tretinoin. This is 0.05% tretinoin cream, as well as spironolactone and a topical antibiotic, clindamycin. I only used the clindamycin for a couple months. The spironolactone I was on for a little bit over three months, and that's actually what my last acne video was mainly about, was my results with spironolactone. And if you remember that video, I was really, really happy with my results. Uh, but unfortunately, a little bit after I posted that video, I started to get these weird pains in my kidney area. So my doctor had me go off the spiro, did some tests. After I went off of it, the pains went away, all the tests were normal. And even though I was really happy with my results on spiro, I decided not to try and go back on it and just stick to the tretinoin and see how well I would do with just this, just like kind of committing to it for you know, several months and just kind of see where it took me. And after a full year, I do have to say I am finally in a place where I'm really happy with my results. Now, if you had asked me about six months in, I, I really was not enjoying being on tretinoin. Like, the side effects were pretty annoying for me, just the irritation, the peeling, but I feel like I finally figured out a good skincare routine that really works for me, so I'm gonna share my kind of updated tretinoin skincare routine at the end of this video. Um, yeah, I'm just, I feel like I'm in a good place with my skin. Today, I am not wearing any coverage products on my face. I am wearing a little bit of under eye concealer, but I don't have on any foundation. The only other makeup I'm wearing is some brow pencil, mascara, and lip gloss. But I did want to just kind of let my real skin show through for this video so you could really get a good look at where we are at one year in with the tretinoin. So I have to say I'm really happy with the results I've gotten. As you can see, my skin is not perfect still. I do still have, um, even right now, I do have one small breakout over here, but honestly, I'm okay with that. Of course, I would love to have like perfectly breakout free skin, but at the same time, I'm really not that into the idea of having to take a medication, like a, a pill every day, whether it's Spiro or birth control or some other oral medication to keep my, my acne under control. And especially with Spiro, like I would probably have to be on that indefinitely. So not being on any pill or anything, I'm I'm really happy with this. Like, I feel like this is very manageable for me. And I'm also just really happy to be on tretinoin also for the anti-aging benefits. I am 27. And so, you know, I feel like once I turned 30 anyway, I was thinking about going on tretinoin for the anti-aging. So the fact that I'm on it now, it's helping to keep my acne very much under control. And, you know, there's those added benefits of helping with wrinkles and fine lines. I'm really happy to be on it. Despite the very annoying side effects that I did experience in the first like six to eight months of being on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and insert a before photo of what my skin looked like before I started any medication at all for my acne. This is what my skin looked like. It was, it was pretty rough. I had a lot of cystic acne, especially on my cheeks. You can see I do still have some scarring here. And when I do break out, Still, I do typically break out in this area or like my jawline, but it is much better. Like I, I am happy with the way that my skin is looking now, especially knowing how bad it was then. As far as like the timeline, when I started, my, my derm basically told me to just start using it as often as I could. Like he recommended using it every night right off the bat. Uh, yeah, I decided to actually start with every other night and even that, was just too much like my skin started peeling like crazy at first especially when I put on makeup I could really see just how bad the peeling was then I dialed it back to every third night at first and I did every third night for the first three months then after three months I started every other night and then after about 
six-ish months, I started trying to increase that to every day. So right now I am applying it pretty much every night. I would say on average, maybe six days a week. I do sometimes take a day off when I feel like my skin needs it. Especially if I'm starting to feel like my skin is a little bit irritated, I will skip a night just to kind of let my skin relax for a second, but for the most part every night and that's been working well. So yeah, I would recommend if you are going on tretinoin start. I mean, honestly, some people recommend starting with like once a week, which might be the best way to do it, but I was really wanting to start seeing some acne results. So that's why I started it a little bit more frequently, but my timeline is kind of weird because like I said, I was on the spironolactone for the first three months of being on tretinoin. But once I went off the spiro, I was really worried that my acne would just come back in full force. But it never really did. It definitely came back more than it was when I was on the spiro. But I do feel like the tretinoin, because it had had about three months to start working on my skin, it kept my acne at bay. And ever since then, ever since that like three month mark of being on this um, and going off the spiro, it has only decreased since then. So I would say after the three month mark, I was definitely starting to notice some improvement with just the tretinoin alone. And from there, it continued to get even better and better. So really happy with it now. A lot of people are scared of the purge where when you first start the tretinoin, you start to get purging where your skin just starts breaking out a lot. I didn't have any purging that I experienced. So that I'm happy to report. I know some people do have that, some people don't. There's a dermatologist on YouTube, you've probably heard of her if you are on skincare YouTube at all, but Dr. Dre has been a great resource for me when it comes to just learning about how to take care of my skin while being on tretinoin. And I think she has made a video about the purging as well. So if you wanna hear more information about that, I'll link her below. She's wonderful, great resource. But for me, the main side effect I experienced was peeling, a lot of dryness, like just general irritation. When I would apply like my moisturizer, sometimes my skin would really sting. Um, when, you know, normally that moisturizer would not make my skin sting, so just things like that. And I do just feel like I'm really in tune with my skin now. Tretinoin has really forced me to take a hard look at my skincare routine and really pare it down to just the essentials, the things that are really going to help my skin and kind of just getting rid of the rest. Like, my skincare routine is very no frills, as you will see. And I do feel like even now, after being on it for a year, there is kind of this fine line when it comes to my skin where if I do, let's say, go overboard with my skincare routine, maybe I introduced a new product that my skin isn't liking, or I just generally use too many products one day on my skin, my skin will kind of, that, that kind of irritation and peeling will sort of flare up for a brief time, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was at the beginning. And as long as I stick to what I know is working for my skin right now, I'm good, I don't really have terrible peeling or dryness anymore, but I do just feel like being on tretinoin now, I have to be very mindful about my skincare routine. So pretty much for the last year of being on tretinoin, I haven't used any other actives on my skin. Really no salicylic acid or BHA exfoliant type products. Definitely no physical exfoliants, but I wasn't using those to begin with anyway. Um, I have, here and there, I have used a very gentle AHA, like overnight leave-on treatment in between nights of tretinoin, but for the most part, I really have stepped away from using any other actives on my skin because I just wanted to let the tretinoin do its job and I didn't want to irritate my skin. So let's go ahead and talk about my skincare routine. I feel like I have a great skincare routine going on right now and it really is pretty minimal. So let's go ahead and start with my PM routine. So in the PM, I always do a double cleanse to remove makeup, sunscreen, all of that. So I'll either use a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil. Right now I'm using the Versed Day Dissolve Cleansing Balm. I don't love this. It gets the job done, but it's definitely not my favorite. Um, I will say my favorite has been the uh, Fourth Ray Beauty BFD Cleansing Oil. I also really enjoyed the Paula's Choice Cleansing Balm, but this one is fine. It does the job. I don't have much left of that. So that's what I'm using right now. I'm really not that picky though, as long as it effectively removes everything. So that is the first thing I do at night. And then my second cleanse, this is one of the most important things I have found that works for me, is a non-foaming cream cleanser. Any kind of foaming cleanser, any kind of cleanser that works up into a lather, even if it's a very, very minor lather, it will 
really irritate my skin and dry it out. So I have been using the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery Softening Cream Cleanser for just about the past year, I think, maybe a little bit less than that, but this is so great. It doesn't foam up at all. It just comes out as a white cream. It feels so nice on my skin. Even if my skin is irritated, this just feels very soothing. It does clean my skin. Like I do feel like my skin is clean after I use this, even though there's no lather to it but it doesn't strip it, doesn't irritate it at all, so highly recommend this cleanser. I feel like this is one of those unsung heroes of Paula's Choice. Really, their entire skincare recovery line, as you will see, has been a godsend for me. They they really have some great products in this line. If you're on tretinoin or any other like harsh topicals, or I bet if you're on Accutane also, this would probably be a really good line to check out. But that's the cleanser. I have the jumbo value size of this because I love it that much. <laughs> Typically after that, I just go straight to moisturizer. Sometimes I might use like a hydrating serum, but honestly, what really what I've learned with tretinoin is less is more. As, as few products as I can use, the better. So I will then just go in with my moisturizer. Right now, the one I'm using is the Osea Seabiotic water cream. This is very pricey. It's a really nice cream, I will say. But I will also list below some of my other favorite moisturizers that are more affordable. Really like the e.l.f. Holy Hydration. That's a great one. Or the Versed Skin Soak moisturizer is also really good. But that's just the moisturizer I'm using right now. While I'm waiting for that moisturizer to sink in, I'll go in with my eye cream. Right now, the one I'm using is the Josie Marin Argon Pro Retinol Eye Concentrate. I don't love this, but it's just what I'm using right now. I'm really not that particular about eye creams. Uh, I just kind of use whatever I have on hand. You can see I've used most of this up already, but that's what I'm using there. And then once that has had time to sink in and I feel like my skin is dry from that, then I'll go in with my Tretinoin. I just use a very small pea-sized amount. I think that's, that's really all you need. And this is actually the same tube I have had since last April when I started. I am running pretty low, but it's lasted me this long because I really only use that small pea-sized amount every time. So I'll just kind of dot that around and then work it into my skin. And then once that has had a chance to sink in, then I like to go in with a really thick, rich cream. Um, so some people call that the sandwich method, where you kind of sandwich the tretinoin in between two layers of moisturizer. You can do it with the same moisturizer if you want. I like to follow it up with a nice, occlusive, very nourishing cream. So this is my favorite. Another, another thing from Paula's Choice skin recovery line. This is their hydrating treatment mask. So they call it an overnight mask or a leave-on mask. It's essentially just a nice thick night cream. This has been so helpful. It just really, really hydrates and nourishes my skin. Um, I feel like when I'm using this, it really does help to keep my skin from getting irritated and dry and peely. So that has been great. Can't recommend this skin recovery line highly enough. It's been so, so helpful. And then I will go in with the Kopari Starry Eye Balm just around the eye area, kind of layered on top of my eye cream. I feel like that helps keep the tretinoin from making my eye area dry. I obviously don't put the tretinoin anywhere near my eyes, but it can kind of migrate into that region. So this kind of just keeps that area protected and it keeps it from getting dried out. But Dr. Dre, the dermatologist I mentioned, also recommends just using like plain Vaseline, like just a small amount of that around the eye area. That basically does the same thing. Obviously way cheaper than this, but this is just what I have on hand right now. And then I'll go in with a lip balm. This is the Ilia Lip Wrap Reviving Balm. Any lip balm, this is just the one I'm using right now. I also love the Paula's Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm. That is the best one. Great bang for your buck too. Or the Kapari Lip Glossy is another really good one. Um, this one I do think is a little bit overpriced. I think the Kapari one is just as good, but it's like a fraction of the price. But that's what I'm using right now. Very important to protect your lips from the Tretinoin as well, because even though you don't apply it near your lips, it can still, again, like migrate into that area and cause your lips to get really dried out. So a good lip balm is a must. So that's my PM skincare routine. So then in the morning, another one of my like key findings has been to just rinse my face with water in the morning. I don't actually use a cleanser in the morning. Lots of dermatologists recommend skipping a morning cleanse if you have sensitive skin or dry skin or you're on tretinoin. It really does help to just keep my skin calm, to just skip cleansing altogether. I mean, at night I sleep on a clean pillowcase. It's not like I'm working up a sweat or anything, so I don't really feel like I need to cleanse my skin. I'll just kind of rinse it with water in the morning. And then uh, I'll kind of pat my face dry and go in with the Paula's Choice Enriched Calming Toner, another one from their skin recovery line. 
This is really nice. I don't think a toner is an absolute must, but I really like this because I do feel like it's very soothing to my skin. And it also, I, I like to have damp skin when I apply my serums and moisturizers. I feel like it just helps those ingredients penetrate a little bit better and it helps your skin have some extra moisture to seal in with the moisturizer. So I've really been enjoying this and this bottle has lasted me such a long time. I think I've had the same bottle for again like almost a year at this point and there's still quite a bit left. So I do feel like serums are optional but lately I have been enjoying going in with some sort of serum in the morning. So I've been using the Versed Auto Save Advanced Restoring Serum. This is basically an antioxidant serum. It says it's meant for aging skin and dullness. I've only been using it for a couple of weeks now, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't feel like it irritates my skin at all, and it has a nice sort of creamy texture, so it feels like it's just giving my skin a little bit of extra nourishment, so really been enjoying that. Sometimes I'll use like a hyaluronic acid serum, sometimes I'll use like the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Serum, but honestly I feel like that kind of irritates my skin, so I've just been sticking to this recently and it's been working really well. Um, and then I will go in with my moisturizer again, same one from the evening, the Osea Seabiotic Water Cream. Um, I also like to use an eye cream in the morning. The morning one I've been using is the Coco Kind Revitalizing Eye Cream. I'm almost done with this, but it's just a nice, it's a really basic eye cream. I think it's fragrance free and just very simple. I don't feel like it's necessarily working wonders for my under eyes, but um, it has one of those like metal tips that feels really nice in the morning, kind of wakes you up and it just gives my eye area some extra moisture which I feel like is always nice so that's what I use for that and then finally last step of the morning skincare routine is always a sunscreen I've been trying out a bunch of different sunscreens because I'm actually getting ready to do my fourth annual sunscreen extravaganza where I test and compare and review a bunch of face sunscreens but I've really been liking the one I used today for the skincare routine is the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47. This is really, really nice and hydrating. It's very glowy, as you can see. All the glow on my skin is coming from this. Very hydrating. This is a mineral sunscreen. I have found that ever since, another big takeaway for me with the Tretinoin is that ever since I've been on Tretinoin, I pretty much have to stick to mineral sunscreens because I feel like any chemical sunscreen does irritate my skin. Um, I can maybe get away with a chemical sunscreen for like one day, but if I'm using it multiple days in a row, my skin starts to get very irritated, starts to peel again. So I've just been sticking to mineral sunscreens and those have been working well. So I've really been on the hunt for good mineral ones and I have a lot of winners to share in that upcoming sunscreen video. So stay tuned for that, be sure you're subscribed. But anyway, the sunscreen that I use today for this skincare routine is the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer with SPF 47. Of course, mineral. This has a very like liquidy, milky sort of texture. And I mean, you can see it really, like it definitely has a little bit of a white cast as you're first rubbing it in, but once it has had a chance to sink into my skin, I don't notice any white cast. Um, I can't promise if you have a deeper skin tone that it won't have a white cast on you, but this is definitely one of the best mineral sunscreens I've found. It's non-tinted, but somehow it still manages to not leave a white cast at all on my skin. So really been happy with this. It also just feels very hydrating, definitely very glowy. If my skin is ever having a day where it is like a little bit extra dry or sensitive, this is the one I go for because it's just so, so hydrating. I will say it does have fragrance to it. It does kind of smell like strawberry yogurt to me. It's a pleasant scent, honestly, but... Um, if you are trying to avoid fragrance, I would stay away from that. Another one I'm really liking that is fragrance-free is the Pipette Mineral Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Um, it's this big green bottle. This is a really great bang for your buck, too. I think it's like under $15 for this 4-ounce tube. You could use this on your face or your body. I only use it on my face. I really like it on the face. I actually feel like it's pretty similar to the Josie Marin, just a little bit less glowy. So those are just a couple options, but like I said, stay tuned because I have a whole big roundup of mineral face sunscreens that I am going to be reviewing, and there are a bunch of really good ones that I have to share. And that's my skincare routine. It does evolve somewhat. Like I would say, you know, I do switch up my lip balms, my serums will change with time, my eye cream, once I run out of this one, I'll change that one up. But, but if there's one thing that you take away from this video, these three products, but especially the, the non-foaming cream cleanser. It doesn't have to be this one. This is just the one that I really like, but a non-foaming cleanser, I really do feel like has been a huge lifesaver on Tretinoin. I, I really cannot get away with using a foaming cleanser. The hydrating treatment mask has been so good, and that toner is really good too. Those are the three things that really stay the same. 
Um, and of course the tretinoin, but these other things like the brand of moisturizer that I use does change But I feel like as long as I'm using those like key things I'm only cleansing in the evenings and I'm just keeping my skincare routine as minimal as possible not using other actives I'm good. I'm happy. My skin is great and sunscreen I'm sure you've heard before but really really important to wear sunscreen all the time But especially when you're on tretinoin because it can make your skin a little bit more sensitive to the sun so a good sunscreen is a must. So I think that's pretty much everything I have to share about my experience after one year. Like I said, my skin is not completely immune to breakouts now. <laughs> I mean, I do still get a breakout here and there. Or like occasionally I'll use a new product that breaks me out. Like recently I was using a moisturizer from Kapari that was breaking me out. So things like that can still happen where I still can get breakouts. But it is much more under control than it was a year ago before I was on the tretinoin. So I'm really happy with my results. If you are getting ready to start tretinoin, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Just take it slow at first. Start out by using it like at least every third day, if not even less, and just keep your skincare routine really minimal. It saves you money too, to not have a million different products that you're using all at once. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hearing about my experience. If you have any questions, I will certainly be responding to comments on this video. So if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover, happy to help if I can. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Um, I mainly post about makeup, but occasionally I do skincare videos as well. Like I said, I've got that sunscreen video coming up that I'm so excited about, so stay tuned for that. And hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.